Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a uh, lecture on stroke anatomy that I think you'll find useful in your practice and, of course, in my courses. But I think that, in general, there are three levels of anatomy with regard to what is important for radiologist assistants. Level one and this is what you must know, and that's essential, and those are things that it would be embarrassing if you didn't know. Level two is anatomy that you should know, or that would be good to know. It's helpful and appropriate, but not essential. This is a kind of material that you should get about a 75% on a test of. And lastly, level three, which is impressive, it's erudite, it is very uh, specialized or uncommon information and it's impressive. Minutia is the term that radiologists will sometimes use. So this is something that's very good to know but far from required. Today we'll be discussing level one brain anatomy which is very basic and try to give you a general picture of the imaging and analysis of stroke patients. Okay so there are four lobes of the brain frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal, and they seem somewhat reasonable to us. Frontal is clearly divided from parietal. Frontal is in front of this central sulcus, so it's all of this. Parietal lobe is between here and here, and then temporal lobe is cordoned off by this sylvian fissure. So the sylvian fissure and central sulcus is really, they are really the important divisions to identify the lobes, whereas the occipital lobe is really far more arbitrary and I, largely is based upon the, the representation of vision in occipital cortex. So this division is pretty obvious and this one is very important, what's frontal and what's parietal and it's especially important because precentral gyrus is motor cortex and postcentral gyrus is sensory cortex. So there's an appreciation of function here that warrants a significant effort to understand where these two structures are. And it all hedges on the central sulcus. Uh, very few people really know how to identify it, and it's really quite simple. I think you'll see that in a moment. Here again, the lobes, just to kind of emphasize in your mind where they are and different views of them, frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal, and then the cerebellum, which is not a cerebral structure. Cere cerebrum and the cerebral hemispheres are composed of these lobes. The cerebellum is a different type of structure. Here's an actual brain, and not quite as pretty, but you can see that there's a central sulcus here. And if you go back and you look, you think here, now the one before that looked like it was a lot more frontal lobe, might have been a smarter person, I guess. But there's central sulcus, and here's central sulcus. Sylvian fissure, so that makes all of this frontal lobe, all of this parietal lobe, back to somewhere here that's occipital lobe. And it is distinguishable, there are some landmarks there, and temporal lobe. They call it lateral fissure. It's the sylvian fissure. Another look. Diagrammatic, well-labeled, anterior central gyrus, which is really, that's an old term. It's the pre-central gyrus, and this is the post-central gyrus because one is in front of and the other behind the central sulcus. A lot hedges on this central sulcus. Pre-central cortex is motor, post-central cortex is sensory. All right, how do we find the central sulcus? Here is the key. The cingulate sulcus is a relatively arbitrary structure. You see it right here. And you see it here. And that is the key to this, because if you can identify this, then you go forward and to the, to the side, forward and to the side, and there's a the central sulcus. Now notice there are several things kind of like that here. 
but none have that somewhat elongated and some kind, some somewhat curled kind of appearance. Okay, so here's another. Here it is. This is the cingulate sulcus. C-I-N-G-U-L-A-T-E. That's all you need to know. You need to see that and then you go forward and over, central sulcus. That makes this motor cortex and this sensory cortex. Here's the cingulate sulcus, forward and over. That makes this the central sulcus, that means this is motor cortex. And you'll see that knowing that, you can, you can predict to some extent what part of the body would be affected by a stroke or a tumor in that area. Okay, here again. Cingulate sulcus, central sulcus. Cingulate sulcus, central sulcus. That makes this motor cortex, which is precentral gyrus. Postcentral gyrus, sensory cortex. Same thing, it's getting a little tough. You don't always see it up this high as well, but this is the cingulate sulcus. You see, there's nothing else quite like it. Forward and to the left, central sulcus. Forward and to the right, central sulcus. Same thing again, we see it here, barely, but now that we know that this is what it is from the lower levels, forward to the side, central sulcus, central sulcus, cingulate sulcus, both sides. And lastly, here you can see that unlike these other sulci in the frontal lobes, you can really see very nicely how this central sulcus goes all the way up to the top. Not always true, and you can even see a nice remnant of the cingulate sulcus there. And here we're out of it. Cingulate sulcus, go forward and to the right, go forward to the left, and you'll find the central sulcus. The central sulcus, which divides frontal lobe from parietal lobe, which decides, d divides precentral gyrus from postcentral gyrus, which is to say motor cortex from sensory cortex. And that would allow you to predict that a subdural hematoma like this, compressing on the, let's see, central sulcus, postcentral gyrus, would cause a sensory defect probably in the upper body. It gives you a little bit more of a view of the whole, the whole extent of that subdural hematoma. Where is the infarct located? Is that frontal lobe? Is it frontal and parietal? Well, here you have central sulcus. See how it stands out? It's not this. Cent I mean, this is, this, is, this is cingulate sulcus. This is where you have cingulate sulcus. And so this is central gyrus, or central sulcus on the left. Central sulcus on the right is gone. It's obliterated. And we can tell that since this is central sulcus on the right, the central sulcus on the left is around here. So this is predominantly parietal. Well, that's important, but many people would look at this and think it's primarily frontal just because they think of the frontal lobe as, as larger and more dominant, and we think of seeing the frontal lobe more on the axial views when we get toward the top of the brain. But this helps you know for sure what, you're, what lobe you're in. Now here we have central sulcus here, because we have cingulate sulcus, cingulate sulcus, forward and to the side, central. Well, you've got a little bit, encroaching a little bit on the frontal lobe, specifically the pre-central gyrus or motor cortex, but not much, not much. Okay, what's this guy got to do with it here? This is a singer, and this is a mustached singer. Yes, it's a bit ridiculous, but it makes a point. This is a way of remembering this little trick because cingulate is not going to be a word that you will use very much. But mustache is more common and so if you think of this instead of the cingulate sulcus as the cingulate mustache, well this is a mustached singer. Sing, cingulate, cingulate, singer, Mustache, mustache. Silly mnemonic, but it may work for you. Mnemonic, by the way, is not mnemonic, and it starts with an M. It's of 
Greek origin, and it's spelled M-N-E-M-O-N-I-C. Mustached singer, cingulate mustache. So what was that word that Dr. Mintz taught us? Oh yeah, mustached singer. Singer, singular, must, cingulate mustache. They even used mnemonic in journals of radiology. There we go. Sing away. Okay, the key to identifying the central sulcus is which of the following? Singulate sulcus. Very good. Okay, Radiology Assistant, by the way, is an excellent site to which you should consider going at some time. All right, I'm going to hold off right there and more soon.